the idyllic calm of the island of Rügen, off Germany's Baltic Sea coast. Today, rudely interrupted by the classic sound of a classic East German automobile. During the communist era, the roads here were dominated by the rattling of two-stroke engines, the Wartburg, the Melkus, the Simpson, the MZ, or the most iconic East German car, the Trabant. Our car reviewer Christoph feels a bit sorry for the good old Trabi. It spent decades pottering along the roads of East Germany, choking pedestrians with its two-stroke exhaust, but getting an entire country on the move. And in return, it receives only ridicule, some milestone. When the first Trabant was launched in 1957 under the name P50, it could hold its own against West German models. Its 13 kilowatts may not have been a threat to the Gogo Mobile or the VW Bug, but the latter certainly didn't leave their eastern cousins far behind. Not for the time being, at least. The model Christoph's driving is the P601, built in 1990, making it one of the very last Trubbies built. The engine hadn't changed since 1969. A two-stroke unit with 600 cc's and just 26 horsepower. Not exactly state-of-the-art as the 1990s dawned. The communist revolution was deemed more important than any automotive evolution. Cars essentially remained all about function rather than form. The Trabi's design barely moved on after 1964, and its engine setup soon became outdated. In the West, two-stroke engines were primarily associated with motorbikes and lawnmowers. Two-stroke engines are pretty simple, low-cost and easy to service. That was a big advantage given East Germany's struggling industry. But you really had to use big revs to get proper pace out of the car and a lot of shifting. The Trabi has a simple gear lever protruding from the dashboard. It was nicknamed the walking stick and understandably so. Short, swift gear changes were practically impossible, so driving was not much fun. But the Trabi was ideal for East Germans vacationing in neighboring communist countries. The antiquated leaf springs cope with low quality paving, and a top speed of 110 kilometers per hour was sufficient for many Eastern European roads. It didn't get you there fast, but it got you there. The Trabi's body earned it a variety of derogatory names involving cardboard or plastic. The material in question was duroplast, a hard composite substance born out of necessity. There was a massive shortage of sheet metal in East Germany. The West stopped supplying steel in the wake of the Cold War trade embargo, and the material provided by the Soviet Union was not exactly of the finest quality. Despite the duroplast, the Trabi was still prone to rust because of the metal shell underneath the composite skin. S stands for Sachsenring, the state-owned company that built the Trabant. VEB Sachsenring was based in the city of Zwickau in Saxony. The Trabi's tail fins were inspired by the American cruisers of the 1950s. In 1964, the body was the then highly modern double trapsoidal design, which it retained through 1990. The interior was on the Spartan side, steering wheel, two dials and four seats, garnished with a smattering of knobs and a few square feet of felt fabric. Sitting at the back was the two-cylinder, two-stroke engine with a 0.6-liter displacement and that familiar rum rum. Christoph is checking out the Trabant S model. S for sporty? <laughs> no, it likewise has the standard two-stroke engine with 26 horsepower. The S stands for Sonderwunsch, or special option. The optional extra in this case is a little compartment under the dashboard. There's no fuel tank display, however. That was only available in the deluxe version. The standard model came with a dipstick. It looks like the tank still got a bit of juice in it. The Trabant never won many prizes. 
but it is featured in the Zeithaus Museum at Volkswagen's Autostadt complex in Wolfsburg, together with around 100 other milestones from automotive history. Does it really deserve such illustrious company, though? After a promising start, the Trabant P601 had the potential to keep pace with the Western European competition. But it enjoyed precious little technical evolution in the course of its 24-year production run. The communist leadership believed such modernization was superfluous. The planned economy didn't plan very far. The functionaries gave the Trabi an expected lifetime of just seven years, which was particularly frustrating with a 12-year waiting list to get one. In fact, the car lasted an average of some 28 years on the roads of East Germany. The Trabi's big advantage was the uncomplicated engineering, which meant many owners could fix things themselves. Except the waiting list for spare parts was also extremely long. Many drivers would give their proud possessions a real waxing and pampering before even taking them out on their maiden run. At the back of their minds was the thought of the dreaded waiting list for a second car. But the Trabi was something of a technical pioneer. It may not have been the first production car with a composite body. That honor went to the Corvette. But 3.2 million units made it the most frequently built. An entire area of popular culture still surrounds the Trabi, while it also serves as a metaphor for the political and economic situation under communism. All in all, it deserves to be called a milestone, rather than milestone of automotive history. So if you can cope with a two-stroke technology and also have a soft spot for old-school purism, you could do worse than try out a Trabi. After all, what other modern classics can you get in decent condition these days for under 3,000 euros?